Today, we're looking at the moments when engineers decided that the rule book was more of a suggestion. We're talking about cars retrofitted with giant fans to suck them to the tarmac, extra brake pedals, and suspension systems that were basically smarter than the drivers. These are the most insane modifications in F1 history that were simply too good to stay legal. Buckle up, this is Formula Everything. Let's start with the legend. The year is 1978. Lotus had just figured out ground effect using fancy aerodynamic tunnels under the car, and they were destroying everyone. Over at Brabham, the legendary designer Gordon Murray had a problem. He wanted ground effect too, but his Alfa Romeo engine was flat, wide, and took up all the space. Basically, his engine was too fat for the car to be aerodynamic. So, Murray did what any rational engineer would do. He gave up on physics and strapped a massive industrial fan to the back of the car. Now, the rules stated that moving aerodynamic devices were strictly illegal. So, Brabham looked the officials in the eye and said, no, no, this giant fan isn't for downforce, it's for cooling. Yes, cooling the engine, which is the engineering equivalent of saying, I only read Playboy for the articles. How else can we make downforce equivalent to the Lotus with a wide engine? And fortunately for us, there was a loophole in the aerodynamic regulations. The idea was, stick a fan on the car to cool the car, make sure that 55% of the fan's energy was cooling the car, 45% went to sucking it down to the ground. They brought this monstrosity to the Swedish Grand Prix. It looked weird. It sounded like a hovercraft. But when Nicky Lauda hit the gas, it stuck to the road like chewing gum on a shoe. The fan sucked the air out from under the car, creating a vacuum. Lauda didn't just win, he cruised. It was so fast, it made the other drivers look like they were looking for a parking spot. Mario Andretti claimed the fan was shooting rocks and debris at the drivers behind him. And here's where it gets spicy. The owner of Brabham was Bernie Eccleston. But Bernie was also trying to become the boss of all F1 teams. The other teams gave him an ultimatum, kill the fan car or we don't support you. So Bernie made a business decision. To keep his friends happy, the BT46B was withdrawn immediately. It raced once. It won once. A 100% win rate. Six days later, though, the car was banned for good. One race, one win. The Brabham fan car. Next up, we have the Lotus 88. This is the brainchild of Colin Chapman. Here's the context. The FIA hated ground effect. They banned the sliding skirts that sealed the car to the track and mandated a specific gap between the car and the road. Ground effect was dead, or so they thought. Chapman's solution? If the rules say the car can't touch the ground, why not build two cars? Basically, the Lotus 88 was a car inside another car, like a carbon fiber Tupperware set. The inner chassis held the driver and the engine. It had soft suspension, so the driver's spine wouldn't shatter. But the outer chassis, the bodywork, was attached separately. As the car sped up, the air pressure pushed the entire outer shell down onto the track, sealing the gap perfectly. It was genius. The rules said movable aerodynamic devices were illegal. Chapman argued, this isn't a device, it's the whole body. The whole car is moving. It was a loophole the size of a truck. Naturally, the other teams took one look at this double chassis wizardry and panicked. They knew if this thing raced, they were fighting for second place. They protested so hard that the FIA black flagged the car before it even started a Grand Prix. The Lotus 88 remains the ultimate what-if story. It never raced. It was banned not because it was dangerous, but because it was just too clever. Okay, we have to talk about the elephant in the room, or rather, the spider in the room. This is the Tyrell P34. And yes, your screen isn't glitching. It actually has six wheels. 
1976, Ken Tyrrell unveiled his sensational six-wheel car, designed by Derek Gardner. In 1976, while everyone else was trying to make their cars faster, Tyrrell's designer, Derek Gardner, asked a simple question. Why have two big front wheels creating drag when you can have four tiny ones hiding behind the front wing? The logic was surprisingly sound. Smaller wheels meant less air resistance and more rubber touching the road for braking. It looked like something a child would draw or a car from a Thunderbirds cartoon. But here is the crazy part. It actually worked. At the 1976 Swedish Grand Prix, the six-wheeled freak didn't just compete, it destroyed the field. Jody Schechter and Patrick Depayet finished first and second. It remains the only six-wheeled car to ever win a Formula One race. So why don't we drive six-wheeled cars today? Well, it wasn't banned. It actually died because of <sighs> laziness. Goodyear, the tire supplier, was busy developing better big tires for Ferrari and McLaren. They didn't want to spend millions developing tiny 10-inch tires just for Tyrrell. Now we enter the computer age. Williams in 1992 and 1993, they didn't just use active suspension, they weaponized it. The Williams FW14B was basically a robot on wheels. While other drivers were fighting the steering wheel and bouncing over curbs, the Williams was programmed to predict the track. It kept the car perfectly flat, maximizing aerodynamics every single millisecond. It was so effective that driving it was described as unnerving. The car was doing things the driver didn't ask it to do, but it didn't matter because it was faster than a cheetah on espresso. Nigel Mansell and Alain Prost won championships so easily it looked like they were driving to the grocery store. Naturally, everyone else hated it. The smaller teams screamed that the technology was too expensive. The purists screamed that it made driving too easy. The FIA agreed. They decided that the driver should actually drive the car, not just be a passenger in a very fast computer. At the end of 1993, active suspension was banned. In the late 90s, the cockpit of an F1 car was already cramped, but McLaren decided the drivers weren't busy enough, so they installed a third pedal. No, it wasn't a clutch and it wasn't a footrest. It was a secret weapon to kill understeer. You know that feeling when you turn the wheel, but the car keeps going straight? That's understeer. It's annoying in a road car. It's terrifying at 200 miles per hour. McLaren's solution was brilliant. The extra pedal controlled the brake on just one rear wheel. If you wanted to turn right, you press the pedal, the right rear wheel slowed down, and the car was literally dragged into the corner. They gained half a second per lap. That is an eternity in F1. And for a while, nobody knew. McLaren kept their mouths shut until a photographer named Darren Heath got suspicious. He noticed something weird. The McLaren's rear brake discs were glowing red hot in the middle of the corner, right when the driver should be accelerating. He snapped the photo, the secret was out, and the paddock exploded. Rival teams, mainly Ferrari, threw a fit. They argued it was four-wheel steering, which was illegal. The FIA agreed and banned the third pedal immediately. But here is the ultimate flex. McLaren took the system out, went back to a normal car, and won the 1998 championship anyway. And finally, the greatest Cinderella story in F1 history. The year is 2009. Honda had just quit Formula One because they were tired of losing and the economy was crashing. They sold the team to Ross Braun for literally one pound. When we finally closed the deal, I gave a pound to the Honda executive to formalize the deal. So here you have a team with no money, no sponsors, and a plain white car that looked like it was painted with Tipex. Everyone thought they were going to be dead last. But Ross Braun had a secret. While reading the rule book, his engineers found a loophole you could drive a truck through. The rules said the floor of the car had to be solid. But 
Braun noticed that there was a tiny transitional area between the floor and the back of the car where the rules didn't explicitly say you couldn't put a hole. So they drilled a hole. They created the double diffuser. It channeled air in a way that sucked the car down to the track with insane force. When they showed up to testing, the other teams laughed at the plain white car <laughs> until it did a lap time. Then the laughter stopped and the panic started. The Braun GP car wasn't just fast, it was in a different time zone. Jensen Button won six of the first seven races. The big teams, Ferrari, McLaren, Red Bull, spent millions trying to copy the design or get it banned. But it was too late. The double diffuser was declared legal for that season. Braun GP won both championships in their only year of existence. The FIA eventually banned the double diffuser in 2011, but it didn't matter. Braun came, saw, conquered, and sold the team to Mercedes for a fortune. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this deep dive, smash that like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm, which is the only rule book we actually follow. <laughs>